And with that, we'll have our call our meeting to order. I'd like to welcome everybody who's in our audience. We have some students who are going to be presenting, so we're very excited about that. And we also have a number of wonderful PTO representatives, part of the leadership of our PTOs. And PTO is certainly part of our school family, and we really appreciate what you do for the schools to enrich the lives of all of our students. So welcome. Um, you're not required to ever stay for an entire meeting. You are welcome to. We will have a small break, like I said before, so you can quietly exit if you choose. You can also watch our meetings online, stream it live, or you can look at archived meetings if there's ever any information you'd like to see. And with that, we will have roll call. Mrs. Niles. Yes, all board members are present and accounted for, and we have a quorum. Wonderful, thank you. And we'll rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Moving right along, we have our district update. And to that, we'll turn to Dr. Wall. Thank you, Leila. We're very excited this evening to have our high school students represented. I'm, and it's nice to have an audience for them because uh, they merit an audience. They're outstanding. Uh, from the high school, we have Char Reed with us tonight to introduce these young uh, men and young ladies for the DECA program. Char, would you come up, please? And if you go to the podium, and you can take it from there. Thank you for being here this evening. It's a, it's a pleasure for me to introduce uh, three students to you all today, um, and I'll go ahead and have you guys all come up. Uh, the first is Molly McGuire, and she is the VP of Retail Operations for the Carmel Cafe and Market in all of DECA, um, and she basically is in charge of running the cafe on a day-to-day -day basis as well as the market which sells the spirit wear for the, for the store, and uh, she'll be sharing some really interesting uh, numbers and experiences with you guys in a moment. Shaquille is our chapter president, and he is responsible for leading a chapter of 585 high school students. So over 10% of this, the student body is now involved with, with DECA, and he is really in charge of all of that. It's a truly student-run organization, and he has a committee of, of great folks, like Juliana out in the crowd here, and uh, Tyler are in charge of our communications and our competitive events. And each of them has a specific role, too. We just didn't have time to hear from them this evening. And then also, Jessica Didi is our VP of Public Relations. And she's been doing some really, really cool things in the community with businesses and starting to try to create more authentic experiences for students. So I'll go ahead and turn it over first to Molly. And uh, I'm excited for them to share with you guys. Hi, everyone. As Mr. Reed just said, my name is Molly McGuire. I'm a senior at Carmel High School, and I am the Vice President of Retail Operations for the Carmel Cafe and Market. Now, before I begin, I just want you all to know Tyler and Juliana will be passing out um, some flyers with some more information as we all speak, so you can kind of say hi to them. Um, the Carmel Cafe and Market was founded in October of 2014 and has made a huge impact on Carmel High School and incredible progress over the last year as we've begun to analyze. This year we have expanded to include the Old Spirit Shop, which we've renamed the market, and that's our new apparel and merchandise sector of our business. In terms of the cafe, our products include beverages like frappuccinos, Italian sodas, um, coffee, tea, lattes, and several branded beverages. We've also expanded into a second location known as the Cafe Express, which is located near our main cafeteria and open during all lunches, so we're very excited about that as well. We are a school-based enterprise, as Mr. Reed just mentioned, which means we're entirely student-run. None of the teachers or staff have any real um, control over what we do. We are the end-of-the-day decision-makers, which we pride ourselves in. <laughs> of course, we take a lot of advice and support from Mr. Reed, as he has provided us over the last few months, um, but he's really encouraged us to go after what we want and what we hope to see succeed and to kind of go with what we believe will be successful. We also have several teams dedicated to improving the marketing and design of our program. Everything we sell is designed by ourselves and tested with our consumer base, and we pride ourselves in that as well. This year we have created several new leadership positions to encourage students 
to go after what they're interested in, to find a position that they feel as if will amplify their business skills as well as provide something to our enterprise. Most importantly, the Carmel Cafe and Market gives students like myself the opportunity to succeed and develop and practice business skills every day. We've improved in all areas of communication, collaboration, problem solving, and leadership. And we really work together as a team and encourage ourselves to improve every day. Since the end of July, we've been open less than six hours a week, but made $30,000 almost in sales, which we're really excited about. Um, and that includes sales of merchandise, beverages, and gift cards. Although some of the profit is used for reinvestment and purchasing, we set aside 85% to fund student trips to international competition through our DECA program. And now our DECA president, Shaquille Zia, will speak more about the benefits and opportunities that Carmel DECA provides our students. Uh, thank you, Molly. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Shaquille Zia, and I am the president for Carmel DECA for this upcoming school year. Carmel DECA is more than just an extracurricular club or a competition. It's actually an opportunity for all these students. It's an opportunity to gain meaningful, authentic learning experience and to really get experience in real-life business situations. As Molly explained just now that we have the Carmel Cafe and Market, and it's opened every day and gives students in the morning, during lunch, and during SRT opportunities to really see things from a retail perspective and operational perspective of a real business and how it operates. And of course, we have many people behind it working on the marketing and design aspects of it. Well, by providing these opportunities to students, they take them and they apply them beyond the classroom. For example, last year, we also had over 500 students within the chapter, which was as well as 10% of the school population. And we sent over 100 to international competition, which broke several state records in the process. At international competition, we placed 19 students in the top 10, with even one group coming out as world champions. Now, in this whole process of getting to the international stage, we had several students who had gotten job opportunities and internships going into their summer, which was very beneficial for some seniors going to college. And this year, we plan to take that one step further. Jessica D., who is our VP of per Personal Relations, uh, would love to speak about that. So. Good evening, my name is Jessica Didi, and my partner Rachel Sorensen and I are responsible for public relations at Carmel Deca. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share with you a little more about what we do. The purpose of Carmel Deca is to provide students with the knowledge and skills they need to be successful in life. Um, we are a co-curricular organization that operates in conjunction with the IB Business Management and Marketing classes. The IB program provides a wonderful opportunity for students through project-based learning, real-world applications, and to extend on those opportunities, Carmel Deca would like to connect students with the community to create more authentic and meaningful learning experiences. And in addition to the Carmel Cafe and Market, which you heard about from Molly earlier, there are several other student-led projects underway that are working to achieve this goal. The public relations team is currently in the process of forming relationships with businesses in the local community. We are looking for executives that are willing to mentor our students as they prepare for DECA competition and possibly help fund the trip to the international competition in Nashville, Tennessee this April. In December, we will be hosting a banquet for our partners just as a way of saying thank you. Our Entrepreneurship Promotion Committee is organizing the LEAD Conference, which will take place at Carmel High School on October 24th. This event is a culmination of professionally-led workshops, uh, an innovation idea challenge, and a chance for DECA students to receive professional feedback on their competition ideas. And the, one of the cool things about this is it's not just Carmel High School. DECA chapters from all around the state of Indiana are invited to join us that day. Another group of three students will be working with middle school and elementary school students to promote financial literacy. And the community service team is working with the Ronald McDonald House to raise money and uh, awareness for the organization. This community service project received first place at the international competition in Orlando last year. This year we are taking community outreach to the next level and we really value the real world experience that comes with the projects that you've heard about tonight. If this is something you'd like to be involved in, please visit our website at carmeldeca.com. 
to partner, visit the Business Partners tab. And again, thank you so much for your time, and hopefully we'll get the chance to work together in the future. You don't get away that easy. <laughs> we were at a conference day, the school board and myself, it's an annual um, state school board conference down in the convention center in Indianapolis. And the keynote, Dr. David Berliner from Arizona State talked about championing public schools in the United States and cited measures for entrepreneurship and creativity um, that you guys are exemplifying and modeling for us this evening. And when you look at those uh, measurements and those success measures in the United States, our public schools are the top in, in the internationally and globally. And so I just wanted to put that plug in for public schools and the three of you as an example of the shining light of Carmel Clay schools and public schools. And thank you for exemplifying what is great in public schools and great in Carmel Clay schools. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming back and sharing with us the great experiences that you're having with DECA and how it's really working with the school system and all the entrepreneurship opportunities that you're providing to all of our students. I know we had a great opportunity to hear you at the um, chamber luncheon last week, and we were excited to learn that you were coming back. So thank you. With that, we'll break for just a couple minutes. Um, students and others, if you'd like to take a small break, if you need to get home to your families, you're welcome to do so. Oh, we don't have anybody participating. Oh, we do not have pub anyone participating tonight for public participation. So with that, we'll pause for, I don't know, three, four, five minutes. Um, allow others to leave, grab a snack and back. Um, and we'll resume, I guess, four more minutes. So feel free. Yes.
Okay, we'll resume our meeting if everybody's on board. Next on the agenda is consent. May I get a motion to approve consent? So moved. Second? Second. All in, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. <laughs> Next on our agenda is our public hearing. So at this time, I will suspend the regular board meeting which looks like it's 717 um, and open a public hearing to allow for public input <coughs> regarding the proposed 2016 budgets the three-year capital projects plan and the 12-year bus replacement plan back on august 24th mr mcmichael presented the proposed budgets the 2016 <coughs> budget the capital projects plan and the 12-year bus replacement plan we discussed those proposals and we did authorize the administration to advertise for a public hearing Mr. McMichael, would you like to make any comments regarding the proposals before we? Uh, just that, the that uh, as you noted, these budgets are for calendar year 2016. So we're, uh, from a financial standpoint, we operate on a calendar year rather than a school year. Um, and we do have a, the three year capital projects plan, the 12 year bus replacement plan. It's the first year of those plans um, that ultimately a tax rate will be established to support those plans. The other years, um, th it is a, a plan, but as you know, plans can change. And, and uh, but, but once the, the, these are advertised and the tax rates are established, now we're actually, it'll, it'll show up on our taxpayers' uh, bill. So uh, uh, the, the first year is, is the absolute most, most critical year. Um, and there was a more detailed presentation made at the, at the meet, uh, August 24th meeting to the board and and this is an opportunity for uh, public comment on these budgets and plans thank you mr. McMichael at this time I'll offer members of the public an opportunity to make comments or regarding the plans this also is um, an opportunity for the board to have they have any questions or comments that you'd like to make as well you have an opportunity to do so and we'll wait one minute to give everybody an opportunity to rush to the podium <laughs> 30 seconds to grab some lemon meringue. <laughs> Five more seconds. Well, at this moment, if we do not have anybody wishing to speak, we will go ahead and close this hearing. Hearing closed. Thank you, Roger. Next on the agenda, we have our second reading. We're going into action items. We have our second reading of policy 5420. Reporting student progress. Pam? Yes, um, 54, sorry. Turn on my microphone. Um, 5420 is the first policy that we are bringing to you tonight for our second reading. It's reporting on student progress. Um, we had to add things to this language because of statutory changes defining the school day um, at the state level. The district no longer schedules days in the school calendar for parent-teacher conferences. And teachers continue to communicate student progress and concerns with parents in a variety of ways, including but not limited to phone conversations, personal meetings, emails, student online records, and report cards. So we are changing language in this policy to reflect the statutory changes. Thank you, Pam. Make it a motion on the table to approve the changes made to policy 5420. So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Next, we have policy 8453. 
Pam. The second policy we're bringing tonight is policy 8453, control of non-causal contact communicable, communicable diseases. Um, we are changing this. Um, these changes were suggested by our general counsel, and they include applying the policy to everyone, not just those who voluntarily disclose that they have a communicable disease and changing the absolute statement so physicians and health officers may render judgment on safety and updating legal citations. Thank you, Pam. Make it a motion on the table to approve the changes made to policy 8453. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And moving right along, we have our our 2015-16 legislative priorities for our Carmel Clay School District. And with that, we'll turn to Mrs. Hackett. Thank you. Dana is going to be my helper up there. Um, we, um, she went ahead and made some visual aids there so you can kind of follow along when we're talking through things. Um, CCS has developed specific legislative priorities <coughs> for about the past five years. But this year, as something new, ISBA, which is Indiana School Board Association, has actually begun a more coordinated effort to communicate with our community on legislative priorities statewide, common ones statewide, um, but also communicating with those that can really make a change, our legislators. <clears throat> At our August 10th workshop, as our workshop topic, the board discussed um, last year's Carmel Clay legislative priorities, the proposed legislative priorities from ISBA, and uh, Carmel's current interests and to kind of merge those three aspects to come up with the um, legislative priorities for the 2016 um, session. At that meeting, when we're looking at the legislative priorities from last year, from Carmel Clay, it was kind of a consensus to continue to stress certain key topics, namely adequate public school funding, local flexibility with certain decision making, and meaningful student testing. Then the proposed ISBA legislative priorities, at least they're proposed at that time. Um, CCS interests actually aligned very well. Oh, that's, that's not quite it, but that's, that's what we're going to get to in a minute. Oh. Um, but that's okay, because I'm just going to briefly say that our, our interests actually aligned very well. So we took... Um, I have it. Yep, that's it. Um, ISBA had put out what they were going to propose as their legislative priorities. And as a board, we went through that and held a public discussion. And um, actually, like I said, found that our language aligned, or our interests aligned very well with their language, and especially on certain things. Again, student testing, uh, certain funding issues, especially referendum, ballot language, a couple transportation issues, and a specific collective bargaining issue. So at this time, I actually want to thank the board for holding such a thorough conversation and then kind of following it up with some editing via email. Kind of a special thanks to Mike because he looked up all the Indiana code that coordinated. So we were able to put that in the process well, easily for us. <laughs> Mike put the effort in the background there. Um, and then I that pulled together what I'm recommending as the draft before you, which is which you had up before, which would be the um, Carmel Clay 2016 legislative priorities. <clears throat> I am not, can, can you find the one without the talking points? Oh. Yeah, you had it up earlier. Oh, nope. No, nope. nope. hold on. I'll just say while she's doing that. So ISBA, what they did this year, which was a really good idea, perfect is they included some talking points so that we can use those in communication when we're talking about these <clears throat> priorities. And so we went ahead and made a second um, version of our priorities that included the talking points, and that's what Dana went on to. <coughs> Excuse me. But here is really our main key um, legislative priorities that I'm recommending. In funding, briefly, A, B, and Z have to do with the district's option to pursue a refer a referendum, just different aspects of that. D and F 
support some flexibility between different school funds and specifically make permanent the ability to pay some utility costs and some insurance costs through our capital project funds and not specifically through our general fund. We are, have that capability now, but it ends in 2017, so this would extend the language. Um, e is a reminder that any unfunded mandate program or requirement from the state actually uh, basically forces a school district to pull funding from something else that's important. So to remind our legislators um, to not do that <laughs> and to fund any man mandate that they pass on. So to sum that up, B, C, and F align specifically with the ISBA uh, priorities and A and D derive from the CCS priorities from last year. And what I forgot to say is actually at the meeting this morning at the delegate um, meeting, ISBA's proposed legislative priorities are now, they're approved. So they are no longer proposed. They were proposed up until about 9 o'clock this morning. So that's why it still says proposed up there. Um, our second priority that we're recommending is, has to do with student testing that aligns both with ISBA priorities and um, many things that board members and others have said so that we put more emphasis um, on formative throughout the year testing that can align better with um, student growth and, and specific teaching methods and also with any um, effective teacher evaluation. Our third priority has to do with transportation. A improves language regarding the protective levy in relation to property tax caps, losses which affect transportation funds across the state. Um, affects ours not as much as others, but it's, it's something to keep an eye on. And then B, under that third priority, modifies current language to better define a safe drop-off point for charter or private school students that the public school um, must transport. That just asks for a clarity on definition of safe drop-off. Both of these align with the ISBA priorities. That's where we got them from. And then finally, the collective bargaining priority put forth here allows for MOUs or memorandum of understandings between the district bargaining unit, between the district and the bargaining unit at any time, not just during the, um, the specific formal bargaining parameters and um, timeline. So like I said before, and Danny, you don't have to flip, just go ahead and stay on here. We also okay. pro provide this with talking points and that would give the board members um, in any conversation you're in, you know, some background information on key talking points to put forth these legislative priorities. And then when Nick and I would meet with um, our legislators or other key leaders. So with that explanation, I would like to actually, if I could, go ahead and make a motion um, for board approval um, for the, this draft of our Claire McClay 2016 legislative priorities. Okay. Oh, I thought you. I move. I move. I'll second. Discussion. Pam. Yes. Um, I have a question about uh, under th three transportation letter B. Um, most of our legislative priorities have a statement about something we would like have done. And in your explanation about B, you you mentioned the word modify and you also mentioned um, change the wording on a safe drop-off point. Under B, as it's stated right now, all it says is that under that language, public schools can be put in an untenable legal position. It's just a statement about what could happen, but it doesn't ask us to ask legislators to change anything in this language. For instance, up above, we have allow, allow, should continue. Um, it is important that the state fully fund, make permanent. So we're asking that things be done, but under 3B, we are not asking for anything. It's just a statement. So I would like that language to be changed, please. Pam, do you have a motion to change it to a specific um, a, a specific language change that you'd like to see us change this particular um, statement? We could, um, since 
modify was used in her ex in uh, Trisha's explanation, we could say modify the current language so that schools are not put in an untenable legal position. Mm -hmm. Okay, would you like to? I make a motion that we change the language mm -hmm. um, in 3B, please. Amend the current language. Yeah, I actually like to second that. <laughs> Sounds great. Oh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All in favor of that particular change? I, I mean, I, I guess yes, I just go right ahead. have a question. I, mean, I think the intent of the point is to state out that we see a problem, and I don't know that we know what a solution would be or that we'd advocate for a specific solution. Um, so that, I mean, I, you know, I, I guess that's my, you know, we're not recommending the statute go away. We're not recommending a definition of safe drop point. We're just saying, look, there's a problem out there. You guys need to address it. But we're not. We are not saying that in this language. We're just stating a fact that this is, could put a school in an untenable situation. So are we asking them to modify the language? Are we asking them to change the language? Are we asking them to improve the language? What is our point of putting this in our legislative priorities? I mean, I think our point is that the current statute is problematic. And that, I mean, that's... And that's why and that's, we have and it there. And that's why it's there. I but mean, we need to ask for, for something to be done. We need a verb. Like improve in the one pr prior to that. If we want to say improve the language, fine. But I still think we need a verb. Other okay, discussion. so can we just, can, where, where are we putting modify, I guess is then my question. Where into the statement? The fair. Um, at the beginning, it would just say modify the current language so that schools will not be put in an untenable legal situation or position. Okay, I mean that's, I think when you add the second part that makes sense, yes. Okay. Okay, and let me so just, Pam, can I just clarify, because at first you said are not, and then you said will not. I just want to make sure. Okay, are not. Fine. Okay. So what is the full statement, Pam, that we are looking to include? Modify, oh, I'm sorry. Modify the current language of IC 20-27-11-1 so that public schools are not put in an untenable legal position, dot, dot, dot. Thank you. So the current amendment on the table is to change the language in 3B to state, modify the current language of Indiana Code 2027-11-1 so that public schools are not, right. et cetera. Yes. Any other discussion on that? <clears throat> okay. All in favor of that amendment? Aye. Aye. Other discussion points on our legislative priorities? I just have a question, not necessarily a, I guess a, a point of just to better understand. For our collective bargaining, if we are supporting to allow MOUs at any time during the year, are we stating, does that mean that we can bargain throughout the year or does that, we still have our bargaining window and then if there's an amendment per se to the contract, that's what we'll use the MOU for? Exactly, that yeah, exactly right. Um, actually, ISBA's Legislative priorities put forth both those thoughts. Okay. And our board discussion, I believe, um, the consensus was that if there's a specific point that needed an MOU or a further clarification, that that was a um, logical, organized way to go about that process. Mm -hmm. um, but that some of the parameters that the state has put on the bargaining have actually been helpful so that we can mm -hmm. kind of get to the point and get things resolved and then get on to the business of teaching and so that that actually met 
um, right. Carmel Clay needs. And just just for clarity, this is a the board and exclusive representative agree mm -hmm. to that, and it's very restrictive on what we can bargain. So very just, true. let's just very true. draw clarity to that. Very true. Okay. We still have to fall within the laws okay. of the land. Right. Yes. Any other questions or points to discuss? Go ahead. And I, I, I was going to comment that I thought this was a great exercise for us to take our points from last year and look at the ISBA points this year and meld what our priorities were. But as I'm, I'm just looking at Ford, do we think we need to spell out what an MOU is? Or is that everybody knows what that's? I think for? that's worth spelling out. Thank you. So add in memorandum of understanding and put MOU after it. Okay. And MOUs in parentheses. Okay. Is that a motion for amendment or is that a tweak? I can do that. Clarification. Yes. It's, it's already been stated. It's okay. not a change. I'd like to ditto what Mike said. I. Mm -hmm. It was a great experience for us. I think this is one of the first opportunities we've had to work together as a team since Mike's been on board to really evaluate what we've done in the past and how we want to move forward in the future. So that's it was an exciting opportunity. So thank you, Tricia, for helping to coordinate oh, that for us. Any other questions? I do have one other comment, and that's who, how we want to proceed with this. We send it to. I can say it now, or we can vote on it, and then I can, can comments, whatever. Let's vote on it, okay. and then we'll further have have a little more discussion. Okay. All in favor of supporting the priorities with the amendment made by Pam, for three B, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you, Tricia. To you. Yeah, I just wanted to add um, the process we used last year. I just proposed we use a similar method, and that's um, Dana. I believe emailed our priorities to all our legislators, and then specific ones actually, I believe, were emailed them plus an emailed letter attached, signed by the um, legislative liaison and the superintendent, and those went out to. Um, the Indiana legislators in the Carmel area, which would be Senator Delft's Senators Delph Snyder, Ken Lee, Representative Tor Shively Richardson, Education Committee Chairs Representative Benning and Senator Cruz, Speaker of the House Brian Bosma, President Pro Tem Long, Governor Mike Pence, Superintendent Glenda Ritz, Lieutenant Governor Sue Elsperman. Um, I don't. I not. I didn't know if last year we sent it to the Education Committee, the whole committee. We did to Representative Benning. Yeah. Okay, and um, if we wanted to send um, it on to the national level level of uh, Senator Donnelly, Coates, and Brooks, if, if you think that would do any. We could. We didn't. We didn't last we year, did. but we can. We also send it. There's also an edge. You you've got Bating as uh, representative for the House, and then Senator Cruz for for. Okay, I didn't mm -hmm. hear that one. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And then the other suggestion I would just say, and this wouldn't have to necessarily be a letter to meet, but um, the way ISBA is set up, our regional director, and we're Region 5, um, our regional director is Julie Kaziki with Noblesville, and so that's our kind of communication link with, the, with our okay. grassroots effort. So I'd suggest sending it on to her so she sees how one of her districts is proceeding. That's a good idea. Tricia, did you mention the congressman who is in charge of Ways and Means? No, I didn't because we're not. A, do they have a budget? Did, but, um, but do they have? I don't know this answer. But do they have their little committees that are still working through the year, or not at all? Well, they'd still have Ways and Means. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I don't believe. Committees for the next legislative session have been established yet. That'll happen when the session starts. Um, so, but but Kenley has been it for 
I mean, he's obviously one of the key ones that we need to send to. And he's included anyway. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Thanks. I'll, I'll get so I'll get that final copy, Dana, to you, and I'll put it out just with those tweaks. Everybody has that. And then we'll post those on our website. Where? On our person, our school website. We put it onto the the board last year. Very proud. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. I mean, it, thank you. That was the letter offer I think it did last time to that we're happy to meet with any of our legislators that we send it to. Pardon me. The, the, I think since I didn't see the letter the last time, was it an invitation to sit down with them personally? Yes. And discuss it. Yeah, and we'll send copies of all this to the board. Yeah, and and we were very pleased, you know, with Pam and I, with majority wanted to sit and mm -hmm. talk to us, which was yeah. Very I mean, positive. I, I mean, that was my point. I think last year mm -hmm. we got a very positive response, and we need to keep absolutely those channels open. Absolutely. Well, great. Thanks, team. That's fantastic. I appreciate that we've worked so hard together to establish our legislative priorities. Um, moving right along, we have our discussion, which will turn to Dr. Dudley for course changes for 2016-17. Thank you. And this evening for discussion, I bring to the board um, proposed course changes for um, high school for the year 2016 and 17. It's already it's time to start planning ahead for next year already. We're hardly into this year. Um, but the um, changes and modifications that I bring forward to you um, are, will help continue our efforts to make sure that we have challenging, rigorous courses for our students. Um, these courses um, are hands-on. They truly engage students in problem solving, in um, higher level thinking, critical thinking. Um, and so I'm excited to bring these changes, these course um, recommendations to you. Thank you, Amy. With that, we'll open up the floor to discussion. Kathy. Amy, just for purpose of educating people, can you kind of describe the process through which these courses go before they make it mm -hmm. to our table? Yes. We have, um, at the high school, basically, we have departments that propose either new courses, modifications, revisions to courses, or um, deletion of courses. And so those go through the department, through the department chair to um, Mr. Williams at the high school. And then we have a curriculum advisory committee that they meet and they, the department that's proposing the new course or the change for the course present why they are proposing this course or this change. They present that to the entire curriculum advisory. And the curriculum advisory is made up of teachers, administrators, parents, and also students. And so they have the opportunity, the curriculum advisory has the opportunity to ask questions about these changes or new courses um, and get any of those questions answered. And then Mr. Williams takes that information and then makes the recommendation to me as far as what courses would be um, proposed as new ones or modified or deleted ones. Thank you, Amy. Pam. Yes, and when these courses are proposed, do they have a particular um, audience or st student population that they think will be attending them? Is that why these courses are being proposed and they think that the attendance will be, will back them up? Correct. Um, one of the um, processes and when they're proposing the courses, they always look at who um, might possibly you know, wh why, what is the rationale for proposing this course? And so they share that rationale um, as far as what possible students might be taking this. Like, for example, um, the introduction to computer science. There was a need that we had students that wanted to explore. Before they got into a full year course, the, the proposal of this course would help give the students a semester long course that they would have the opportunity to explore computer science before they committed to a year-long course and that was something that the students as they were you know they would that was a need that the students brought forth and so that course was proposed Kathy so if we approve down the line to, to add these to the curriculum just is there a uh, 
like cut off how many students do we need for them to to fly well it, it all depends on the different courses um, but just because they're approved to be in the program of study does not necessarily mean that it's a course that actually gets staffed in staffing um, because we need to look at we have to as we look at staffing across the board we need to make sure do we have enough course requests um, in order to staff that course because we need to look at here are our allocated resources for each of the courses so it really it, it it's a whole it's a big puzzle when the high school comes over and we sit down and do staffing with them for the courses so it's not an exact we need this amount the, this specific amount of number yeah, number but if it's not feasible to do if we only have one or two students that are requesting the course then the course is not going to fly unless there's some way we can put that course into um, another section that's taught together. <clears throat> Tricia. I just have a question about the peer tutoring global connections. Um, the, it sounds fabulous because it's really thinking out of the box in a couple different angles. But I was curious when you bring, bring up staffing, how would that be staffed? Is there a, a, not necessarily how it would be staffed, but do the peer tutors get um, some um, training in tutoring and study skills and things like that? Do they have that as part of their class, or is it just the tutoring part? Well, they would have that, but the way that course will be run is a little bit different than some of the other courses because that the students will actually take that class during SRT. Mm -hmm. So because the other students will be available for the peer and they won't be tutoring every time in SRT because they also need time if they need to go and get help um, resources for their own courses. Um, so there will be some um, on the front end on tutoring and how do you tutor as opposed to getting the right answer will um, you know one of the great models that we have is in our AVID program in our um, tutorology piece where the students are asking each other questions we could pull some resources from there to help our students to become more familiar with the, the tutoring piece and we have this model going on with our um, our well our students that are in um, National Honor Society where they do a lot of tutoring as well so there will be some on the front end but this is specific to our um, students that are learning English for the first time so they they can get receive that extra hands-on help in tutoring but, but the um, the Honor Society tutoring that's not a graded class is no. this a graded no oh this is an option this is not this is not a graded class and nor is it for credit okay mm -hmm. Thanks. Other questions? Thanks, Amy. So I'm assuming, well, when is the deadline with which you will need to have these approved? I will bring this back to our next regular meeting regular in October. Meeting. Okay. Um, for uh, asking for Thank you very much. And board, if you should have any questions in the meantime, please feel free to send those off to Amy. Thank you, Dr. Dudley. Dr. Wall, we are to you. Thank you. Uh, very excited this evening to talk about the high performance legislation and, and not just talk about it, actually start doing something about it. Um, first of all, I'd like to report, and there'll be more details on this to follow. We had a very positive meeting Wednesday with our friends at HSE to look and share ideas on how we can expand student opportunities uh, under the High performance legislation. Um, what we're looking at tonight and which will be in place this year is the collegiate exam schedule for our Carmel High School, all students at Carmel High School. Um, the schedule is really designed to prepare our students for college and career readiness post secondary. Um, it's it's, it's going to be um, good for the students to look at how they're planning and use of their time. How they use office hours, like you know, they use in uh, when they get post-secondary experience or whatever they may do post-secondary, <coughs> and more independent um, around the time they need and when they need uh, to have access to the teachers. Teachers will be available, just as you can see on the on the matrix up um, in front of you and up on the on the screen. Um, but the overriding theme we discussed Wednesday, you're going to hear more about, and we're going to bring back a report um, in October to look at a um, 
like a senior seminar for the 2016-17 school year. That's something the high school has worked on and, and bounced off the ideas of our friends at HSC and vice versa. And um, we're really excited for this collegiate exam schedule, which we think is very student-centric and very much along the line of college and career readiness for our kids and frankly more excited for other opportunities that we're going to be looking at to really expand how we deliver instruction at the high school level um, that we believe is much more conducive to student learning, student engagement, and allows them to take ownership in what they're going to do now and um, for their future once they're out of high school. So, and Amy, is there anything highlights I missed? Because Amy was very instrumental working with the high school on this as well. It's exciting. I mean, like I said in the beginning, it's nice not to just talk about it anymore because, you know, our response in this summer was, okay, what would you like to do that are, you know, good for kids and, and really expand opportunities for our high school age students? And, um, and then based upon this discussion with HSE, we even discussed how could this matriculate into our middle schools? Don't have any answer for that yet, but we need to keep thinking outside the box. Sure, go ahead. Um, do we still, will we have like a teacher work day after that final day of finals? I'm, I'm, don't, I'm not familiar yes. with the calendar. Because we did talk about that. Yes. Yep, we're good. After both semesters. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Nick. Okay, I great. Thank it. you. I'm Look. looking forward to hearing more about what did on the 23rd and what the senior seminar is at a semester, is at a year long program. So we look forward yeah, to works. learning more. Yeah, we're excited to bring that back in October and keep that thing growing. Thank you. Board member reports. Well, I will share that we were all able to attend, along with Dr. Wall, the um, Indiana State School Board Association meeting, which is downtown. Our conference was today and tomorrow. And we had an opportunity to listen to some really powerful speakers um, and go to various seminars to help us fully develop as board members. And Tricia sat in on our legislative, or as our legislative delegate, um, kind of moving forward with our legislative priorities and giving us a voice. So thank you, and thank you for the opportunity for us to attend those meetings. Any other reports? Well, fantastic with that. Meeting adjourned.